don't think you need any community plugins in Obsidian to get the most out of it, whatever that means. However, I personally am a technophile, so I love figuring things out, I love learning new ways to work, and most of all, I like having options. So here are my top 10 out of all of the plugins that I've tried, which is most, if not every plugin in the community plugins list, so that you don't have to go through an experiment with each one. Number 10 is space repetition, which brings flashcards to Obsidian. There are two things that I really love about it. The first is that it makes it really easy to create flashcards in the first place. You can just go into settings and type out whatever syntax you want that makes sense to you to create flashcards. So for me, that's three colons. And now when I create a flashcard, all that it takes is typing out, well, like a word in Portuguese, three colons, and then the corresponding word in Spanish or whatever other language I want to anchor it to, and then tag that note with something like Portuguese. And that'll be the signal for spaced repetition to create two flashcards out of it. One that shows the Portuguese word, and then I have to remember the Spanish one, or shows me the Spanish word, and I have to remember the Portuguese one. There are a lot of things like that. You can do closed deletions, you can do one-way cards, but I just like doing the reversed ones. And the second thing about spaced repetition that I like is that it's smart. Spaced repetition is a system that's been proven to be really good for teaching you languages, but also just anything in general. This system relies on you being able to give feedback about how easy or hard you found something. And when you choose hard, then that particular flashcard is shown to you more frequently. And if you choose that it was really easy, then that flashcard will be shown to you less frequently. Maybe you'll see it like a month from now. And so you get this nice little curve of being shown the flashcard that is relevant at the time. My primary use case for space repetition Bonjour. is learning languages, and I find it really extremely helpful in that regard. Number nine is initiative tracker. Now, this probably won't make it to your list if you don't play TTRPGs or tabletop role-playing games, but I do, and Initiative Tracker is just amazing. I think it really simplifies a lot of the mental math that we as game masters or as players have to do during a game. I love that you can import TTRPG stat blocks into it. I love that it can read the front matter of characters so that those are automatically pulled in. You can adjust hit points, you can add conditions, you can create your own conditions. And for me, it is essential for running or playing in any game, especially if you're playing a healer like me. Number eight is Obsidian Leaflet. Okay, this is sort of TTRPG related too, but I promise it can be used for non-gaming purposes as well. Leaflet is a way to bring in maps or really any image to Obsidian and be able to annotate it and make parts linkable. Now I do use this for gaming, for creating maps of dungeons and being able to link to each part of the dungeon or each room so that I know what's there as a GM or as a player. But I've also used Leaflet at work to create a sort of architectural diagram that I can zoom in on and then have different parts of the diagram linked to different nodes of components that I need to know about. I've also used it to create a sort of global map of where everybody is. If you are in a bigger team, then it can be useful to understand the bigger picture and where people fit in within an organization or within a team who reports to what and what countries they live in. I think Leaflet has been a surprisingly useful tool that I didn't really think I needed. Number seven is Dice Roller. Now don't be fooled by the name because it really sounds like it's meant for a role-playing game and it is, but it's more than that. Dice Roller is a way to randomly pick something out of a certain set of values. Now those values could be in a table, for example, but it could also be different notes or it could be blocks or paragraphs within a note. So it really opens up the possibilities there. You can use it for role-playing games for for rolling on random tables, for monsters and items and that, but you can also use the randomness that it brings to inspire you in other respects. For example, I use Dice Roller in my daily note template to randomly select a note with a TVZ or my inbox kind of tag so that I know to process that note. It's just a different way to explore your note. And the best thing is it's not completely random. You can do it by tag as well. So if you're looking for something in particular, it'll only roll on those things. 
I really love using randomness to spark serendipity when I'm learning something or when I'm thinking very deeply about a particular topic. Number six is Readwise Official. Sometimes I feel like a shill because I mention them so much, but I really do love them. I've been using them for years when they came out with this integration. I was over the moon because I'd already written my own Python implementation using the Readwise API to bring in my highlights into Obsidian. The Readwise official plugin is so much better and less janky than what I did, but it does the work of bringing in my highlights and just the important parts of the things that I read or listen to or tweets and Mastodon toots that I see and putting them in my Obsidian Vault. I also love that I can customize the format of the note so that when they're imported in, they're imported with all of the tags that I would want, including my TVZ tag, which means to versetteln or to process. And having that degree of control means that I'm much more likely to find and process that information. Number five is periodic notes. Now I love the daily notes core plugin, but it is one of the ones that I would immediately replace with periodic notes because periodic notes is daily notes and more. Daily notes allows you to create a template, but it's only for every day. Periodic Notes does that, but it also lets you set templates for weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly goals. And I really love that it lets you create different sets. So I have one set that's just for personal stuff and then another set that's just for work and they don't have to be the same either. So I have like daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly for my personal ones, but for my work ones, I only have quarterly ones because we have quarterly objectives. So I love that I can switch between them and just have everything really consistent. And that way, when I open up this week's note, for example, I already automatically bring in the stuff from the last week. I did a whole video on this, so go ahead and watch that if you'd like to learn more. But yeah, huge fan of periodic notes. Number four is Excaladraw. We're really getting into the big hitters here, all the things that I've already made videos on, but for good reason. Excaladraw just really opened my mind about visual thinking in general, because I'm not a very visually oriented person. I mean, I'm not an artist, and I tend to think better when it's written in words. However, Excalibur is changing that a little bit because I'm realizing that it causes me to make connections and really understand things in a different way than I would from just verbal processing. Excalibur brings drawings to Obsidian, but to say that it's all drawings makes it sound like you have to be an artist to use it, and you don't. You can use icons, you can use images from the internet, you know, you can even embed different parts of it the way that you can with a note. Like in a note, you can embed a section. Well, in Excalibur, you can embed just a group in the image, which really just opens things up because you can have both a verbal explanation and like a visual graphical representation of things. Number three is quick ad. What would I do without quick ad? I literally use it every day to automate a variety of things. And at first when I installed it, I was like, am I really going to need to automate note taking? But the answer is yes. I use quick ad to do things like create commands so that I just have to select the command and then it automatically, for example, logs something to my daily notes or creates a whole note in a specified folder with a specific specific template. And that's what I use for video ideas. I use it to create my gaming session notes. I use it to create objectives. I do so much with quick ad that it's really hard for me to even conceive of doing these things manually when I could just do them with one command with quick ad. Number two is Templator. I am a big fan of consistency because I am not always the most consistent person. With Templator, you can pretty much remove the core plugin templates because it does that and more, kind of like with a periodic notes one. Templator lets you set up default formats for different types of notes. So you can have one for game sessions, you can have another for meetings, another for people, another for your daily note. It manages all of that and you can also automate it by saying that if you create a note in a specific folder, then automatically apply the template. 
it really shines when you use it with quick add as well because it's just automatically done for you exactly the way that you want another feature that i really love about templator is that it can run user files written in javascript so pretty much Anything you can think of that you can code in JavaScript, you can do with just a single templator string. I actually wasn't sure whether to put this at number one or number two because these two are very close. I literally never create a new vault without these top two in particular. Number one probably isn't that much of a shock because I think it is one of the most popular plugins. It is data view. Data view blew my mind. I never would have said that I needed a database for my notes. In fact, I left Notion because I found it was so, it just didn't work well with how my brain is structured. I didn't like the whole database idea. And yet, for some reason, data view just happens to fulfill that unspoken need that I didn't even know I had in Obsidian. What it does is it lets you create front matter for your notes. So you can have notes wherever they are, wherever you want them in your vault, and you can create front matter and values to them. So you could have things like the type or the date or the location of a person or something like that. And you can query all of them. You don't have to set anything up in advance. You can add them later on if you didn't set up the front matter before. There are so many things that you can do with data view. I also love that data view has two different ways that you can query it. The first is like an SQL like syntax that is fairly intuitive. And then the second is data view JS. You can just write JavaScript to iterate through lists and use conditional logic to figure out which notes you want it to return. There's so many things that I do with data view. Gaming, obviously, it is so nice to be able to look up a town and know all of the shops, all of the NPCs, you know, everything that's ever happened there, all of the sessions that occurred in that town. It's, it's, it's like having a superpower. It's like, I remembered all of it, but I didn't, I just did a query. And to have that already as a template, oh, so good. I also think that it's really nice to be able to go to a meeting and show that you really care about a person by being able to pull in all of the previous mentions of that person or previous meetings that you had with them. And it's all listed there. And yeah, it's not as good as remembering it yourself, but it does still show that you care, right? So I love data view, love it for work. I love it for gaming. I love it for personal stuff. I create databases of like crowdfunding projects and whatnot. Data view is in every part of my vault. And if I were recommending a single plugin for somebody to get started with, a single community plugin that is, it would be data view. It was really hard to pick just 10. For context, I have 63 plugins installed in my main vault right now. And when I was honest with myself, these are the plugins that I would really use and do really use every day. If you'd like to learn more about these plugins, I've listed them all in the first pinned comment down below, along with some resources and links to videos that might help you get started with them. If you like the idea of plugins, but you're not really interested in third party plugins, then check out this video that I made on the top 10 Obsidian core plugins made by the Obsidian developers. Ci vediamo la prossima volta. Thanks for watching.